If you're looking for a quick crash course on voice AI agents, how to get started and actually learn a bit about them, then you're in the right place. Uh, first, who am I uh, speaking to you through your computer? My name is Tommy Christ. I started my AI agency 18 months ago, specializing in building these voice AI systems for real businesses. Um, here's a cheeky picture of me drinking some coffee. Uh, I've automated over 100,000 calls with AI. I've sold these systems for $15,000 and up. Um, I've sold a bunch of different price points, used to work hourly, a whole different conversation. And I help 1,200 plus other people do the same. I have a free community where I help other people sort of build these voice AI agents and sell them to companies. And if you'd like to work with me, there's a link down below. Make sure to book a call. It's like 10 minutes. We can see if we're a good fit and I'll see you there. But getting into what you came here for, the agenda for today is I'll go over the quick business impact of voice AI, uh, how valuable it actually is and how it helps businesses help you understand sort of like the technical behind the scenes stuff of voice AI. I'll give you your AI toolkit and all the platforms and softwares I recommend to get started building it today. And I'll teach you how to build your first AI agent and the steps you need to take. So let me move myself, the real business impact. And this is based on my firsthand accounts as well as research I've done. And so this is a great website called invoca.com. They have a bunch of these infographics about missed calls. I don't even think they do AI voice. I think they do like voicemail handling. But basically, this is just one example they have. They have one for like any company you can imagine um, based on real data that they have. So here's the revenue cost of unanswered calls. And this is for an HVAC company. So let's say their average profit per job is about 900 bucks. Uh, in any given month, they have 1,300 missed calls. Um, of those calls, about half of them are actually leads. And then of those, about 29% of those would have turned into an actual customer. So 900 times 203, 183 grand uh, per month, just over that in profits that they're missing out on. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is that generally AI won't be as good as closing someone or converting someone as a human. Um, that's just something that you have to deal with. But even if this percent was cut in half to like 15%, that would still be over 90 grand a month that they're missing out on um, just from unanswered calls. So this would literally be like after hours calls, calls during holidays, um, on lunch breaks, everything like that, where you could just implement the AI for that and that um, another pretty much 100 projects per month. And then, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then beyond just the numbers, however, uh, there's a lot of headache you solve and get rid of just by implementing AI voice. One, there's no more phone tag. Your receptionist doesn't have to follow up with people that left a voicemail and neither do you as a business owner. There's no more manual data entry. All the calls are automatically logged, sorted, uh, classified or tagged, however you want um, and everything like that. So no more uh, booking and appointments after the call that can happen directly on the call using AI. And lastly, no more interruptions, no more dreading uh, the sound of your phone ringing because it won't anymore. AI will just handle it. And then at the end of the day, you'll see a, a report or you'll start getting notifications that you're getting calls booked on autopilot. Um, it's pretty cool. So next let's get into the basics and actually sort of the, the technology behind voice AI. So here's a little graphic I made. We have this Vitruvian man, which represents the human talking over the phone. Then what happens is that speech, uh, whatever this person says is turned back into text. Think of uh, someone literally sitting here transcribing everything I say word by word, writing it down. That's then fed into an LLM, which think of this as ChatGPT, Claude, um, Google Gemini. That LLM, based on this response, um, then generates more text. Uh, that is the AI response, but the AI is actually going to respond with. That is then fed into a text-to-speech model, which turns this text back into something the AI will say, and the AI says it. Um, and then the human responds, and it goes through that loop again. Then here we have APIs or functions. Is basically if you want to take any of the data this person said um, or that you can find out there then grab extra data out in the world perhaps from your calendar to see what available slots they are or if you want to sort of send an email to this person with a return link or a booking link or anything like that then this is where that would happen if you want to interact with other software such as let's say gmail if you were going to send an email and so this is sort of an optional step um, it won't happen every time, but it's definitely uh, super common and where you can find a lot of power in these voice agents. So first, let's touch on uh, speech-to-text or STT, you'll see it abbreviated sometimes. 
You can think of this as the ears of your AI voice agent. The major models for this, uh, Whisper and I think Google speech to text, they weren't very creative, uh, were created by Google and OpenAI. Deepgram's another popular one. That's more of an independent company that just specializes in speech to text, whereas obviously OpenAI behind ChatGPT and Google are two massive enterprise companies. Rarely will you actually touch speech to text or control anything based on this, um, but it's good to know how it works. Next, we have the LLM, and this is honestly the most crucial part of the voice agent. It's the brain, so to speak. This is what you actually prompt and instruct. So this is, you can think of um, ChatGPT, um, any of the GPT models, Gemini. This is what takes the text of what the human said and actually generates the response. And so this is what you actually prompt, what you control, how you can change how your AI speaks and interacts with the human. Um, if you want to see this leaderboard of what uh, LLM people actually prefer, there's a great website, lmarena.ai backslash leaderboard, and you can find this. And then the last layer of this is the text-to-speech or TTS, which you actually interact with a bit more than speech-to-text. Um, and this is the mouth of your voice agent. So you have the ears in terms of speech-to-text, you have the brain, which is the LLM, and then you have the mouth here, which is text-to-speech. And so this controls the cadence, gender, volume, basically anything that isn't the actual words of the response and instead how it's actually delivered um, by the AI is controlled by this text-to-speech. Currently, Eleven Labs is the leader in this technology right now. And so you'll see a bunch of voices by them. They have like tens of thousands of voices. They have a bunch of them. Um, and each with their own cadence, uh, gender, um, volume, stuff like that. And you can actually control this inside of some of the platforms I'll get to later in your AI toolkit to control how fast it responds, how loud it is, things like that. Then lastly, functions or API calls, you'll also see them called. These are actions that your agent can trigger during the course of its response. So before it actually responds, it can go out, grab data, or perform an action. And so this is stuff like booking a call, sending an email, et cetera. So to actually develop these, if you want to go the custom code route, you can use Python's the most common coding language to develop these. And then I'm not an, actually a coder at all. Um, so I use no-code platforms like NADEN is actually my preferred. And then make.com and Zapier are also no-code alternatives. And then there's more niche ones, one stuff like Paragon specifically for healthcare companies because it's HIPAA compliant. So here, let's just revisit this graphic now that you know a lot more about how these actually work. The human comes in here and obviously they're speaking. So it needs to be turned into text to interact with the LLM. So we have the speech to text model. And then this text is passed through here, to the LLM which generates a response and it may or may not sort of grab open calendar slots or send an email or anything like that in the meantime. Then based on all that data, um, both whatever the human says and uh, the prompt that you control, whatever function it runs, it will then generate a response, which is then transcribed back into spoken language and the AI will respond and say that over the phone. So what's the actual AI toolkit? Um, what tools you need to actually get started building these? And it's actually super simple because the hard work is already done for you. Other companies have already glued together the ears, brain, and mouth of these agents. We just have to control what they say and do. So here's a little graphic of some of the companies and uh, the steerability of them, whatever that means. Um, but a lot of the companies in here you will recognize. I've even mentioned them. Um, Vapi and Retail. Uh, you, you won't see Retail in here, but I'll touch on those in a second. Deepgram, which is speech to text, like I mentioned as well as text-to-speech, but we'll be working with mostly these voice AI middleware. And so here, uh, I actually like to call it voice AI infrastructure. I think it just makes more sense um, to normal people who aren't actually coders or anything like that. Platforms I re recommend for this are either Retail AI or Vapi AI. If you want to see a full breakdown, uh, I did over a 30-minute tutorial breaking down pricing, uh, use cases, when I would recommend which one over the other, as well as quality checks, and you can hear them side by side um, compared. Uh, I will link that video, It'll either pop up in the top right or you can check it out in the description. Voice AI infrastructure, and basically how these work is they let you in a no-code fashion uh, string together all these platforms. Um, so it's super easy to actually use them instead of having to custom code it all yourself. Then other companies are doing this. This is currently a very competitive space. In terms of creating this voice AI infrastructure, 
Eleven Labs, who mainly focuses on text-to-speech, actually created their voice own voice AI infrastructure. And I did also recently make a video on that. But um, this is all sort of personal preference. I recommend checking out my tutorial if you're completely new to the space. And now, if you want to create um, functions and automation, which very likely you will want to, I recommend uh, make.com or NADN if you're going the no-code route. Recently, I've been preferring NADN, but make.com is a bit easier to get started with for beginners. And then if you want to go the custom code route, you can go Python um, and then more such as Zapier. But generally, I would recommend NADN or Python if you're uh, a bit more comfortable with the technical stuff. Um, and then make.com if you're an absolute beginner. And so key takeaways so far is that the hard work is already done for you. Don't make it more difficult than it has to be. These voice agents could range from very simple to very complex. You can make one in five minutes that answers a bunch of basic questions. Or if you're actually integrating one with a business, and we'll talk about use cases in just a second, it will have to be a bit more complex, integrate with specific platforms, um, send and receive data, and run functions. Lastly, you want to ride the AI wave. All the companies I just mentioned have billions of dollars in funding um, combined. And if you're including companies like uh, Google and OpenAI are possibly worth over a trillion dollars. And they're all making this technology cheaper and more impressive and better by the day. And you just get to use it for increasingly lower prices. So make sure to ride this wave. Don't overcomplicate it. Let them do all the hard work and you're able to implement this in your company. So lastly, your first voice agent. And these are the real next steps actually getting started building. So here, let's cover a couple use cases. One, you want a clear, repeatable call flow. So think if your company or if you're building these for companies, think of niches that get the same calls over and over. Um, so home services companies is a really common one. Pretty much anytime someone calls in, either checking on an existing project or they're inquiring about a new project. So that would be a clear, repeatable call flow because it's like the same thing every time. Two, if you, would, or if you already are paying a person to do it or you would pay a person to do that job, then it indicates that it's valuable enough to invest in this technology and actually get a solution for it. Third, uh, if there are low consequences for mistakes. So a good comparison I like to do is if you answer an FAQ wrong or mess up a booking a bit, it's pretty easy to resolve that. It generally isn't a huge deal. Whereas if you mess up a $5,000 invoice that was being automated by voice AI, that's a way bigger deal, could cost you a lot more money. Um, and so you want to automate stuff that has low consequences for mistakes. Fourth, in terms of ease of integration, generally uh, the rule of thumb here is that the more popular a software you use, so if you use a very popular CRM like HubSpot or Pipedrive, it's super easy to integrate with. Um, uh, whereas if you use either your own custom software, sometimes that can be easy to integrate with. However, um, it's just a lot more up in the air. This is something as you build these more, you'll get more familiar with, but the general rule of thumb is if they're more popular, they're easier to integrate with. Lastly, if it doesn't add any extra tech complexity to your existing tech stack as a company. So if you have to buy a bunch of different softwares just to make this system work and be valuable, that's not what you wanna do. Um, and so you just have to weigh the pros and cons there and consider that. After you have a use case, what you have to do is define the job you want done. So I want you to write down step-by-step step exactly how you would want a human to do the job. So here's uh, a little example of an HR SOP template. Um, and so basically just the purpose, procedure, responsibilities. It doesn't have to exactly follow this, but just to give you an idea of, you just wanna imagine if you were hiring a human for this job, exactly what you would tell them to do, how you would train them, everything like that. Next, you wanna map the conversation. Now this is blurred out because this is actually something uh, we built out for a real company we're working with. And so based on your AI SOP document, map out how the conversation will actually flow. So this could be something where someone calls in, you decide, oh, it needs to be a call transfer. I transfer to um, one of these people, depending on sort of what they ask to be transferred for, or, oh, they need to book a call, then they follow this line. it will be like, oh, they want a quote, then they go down here. Uh, they want a repair, they go down here. Um, stuff like that, where you just map out how the conversation will actually flow. Pro tip, use Miro or Figma. They're free and super easy to build these. You can invite other people to it and collaborate with them and get feedback. Next, you wanna hop on the prompting hamster wheel. So after you get all that information I just outlined, you wanna throw that into something like ChatGPT and ask it to create you a voice AI prompt. You then wanna paste that into either Vapi or Retail, the platforms I recommend. Next, you wanna test your agent, speak with it, everything like that. Note down what you didn't like, make changes, and then repeat. 
And this is the prompting hamster wheel. You'll be doing this for a while <laughs> until um, you get the prompt sort of dialed in, but this is super important. Once again, this is sort of refining that LLM, making sure the prompt is good so that it responds exactly how you'd like. And after this, uh, if, you have, if you want to integrate with functions, what you need to do is create your function, again, with NADN, with make.com, with Python. Then you need to connect it to your voice AI infrastructure. Retail and Vappy make this super easy, um, basically just sort of copy and pasting. Next, you want to test, test, and test some more uh, and make sure this function doesn't break, test edge cases, everything like that. You actually want to deploy it and have it taking live calls and then monitor the agent occasionally, listen to some calls, make sure it's handling everything appropriately and it's not breaking. And so next steps of what you can actually do now that you know um, sort of the basics of voice AI, you cannot do anything and you can just waste this knowledge, which boo, um, you shouldn't do that because this technology is incredibly amazing and super valuable for companies. Two, if you're a business owner looking to implement this, you can book a call with me. And once again, the link is down below. And three, you can continue learning. So whether that's my YouTube videos or hopefully joining my free community, I have a bunch of free resources in there for you to continue learning. I have step-by-step -step tutorials where you can walk side-by-side -side with me, literally copy exactly what I'm doing to build these agents. Um, and I'm literally giving you for free, um, showing you exactly how I build uh, five to $10,000 agents in there. And so thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day.